see this? Does it smell good? Can you sit please? Good boy. Okay, it's Friday morning. I'm going to head to the post office to pick up packages. I don't think I'll have enough hands to film while I pick them up and put them, load them and everything, but I'm gonna take you with me. Okay, so normally the street is so packed on a Friday morning you could not find a, a spot to park. So obviously we're still pretty much closed up here in Michigan. post office you can see <laughs> it's getting busy there um, but I got a package from Wild Wool Farms and this is you guys have seen me unbox her surprise box it's Arlene Vasquez from Wild Wool Farms and it is in Washington and you saw me unbox one of her bat surprise boxes probably two months ago or so. Well, she has two different surprise boxes and today she sent me one of each and I'm gonna show them to you and then I'm gonna spin one. So, let's do this. So nice now that I have my own room and I'm like so organized. I always have my knife and everything. It's Friday, it's probably like 10 a.m. What are you doing? Bubba's. Does it smell good? He loves the smell of wool. Be careful, mommy's got a sharp knife. Okay. So this is packaged up really well. There's actually bubble wrap in here too. And those are the two boxes. So let me get in here. Okay, and so on Wild Wool Farm, they have like some famous sheep they've been in, I think it was Vogue Knitting, and actually I'll link their website below because it's kind of a fascinating story. So, let's do it. Alright, so here's the first one. I'm trying not to pull it out so fast that I smack my dog in the face. So this is cute. This is the ultimate goal of every sheep on earth is to wool the world. And then you get, I love that. So that is a picture of one of the sheep on their farm or was one of the sheep on their farm. Oh, this is the bat box. Okay. So, pardon me, sir. Ooh. Oh, cute. So there's a little keychain in here. That's a little bunny. Dude, relax. <laughs> and it says ingredients, merino, soft silk, silk, and rainbow nylon. I love the rainbow nylon. I have some of that in my stash. It's so cute. I really don't want to lose that tag. So... Okay, here's a little keychain. It's got a little um, suede tassel that's like turquoise and it's a little bunny. Isn't that cute? All right, here we go. It is giant. Oh my goodness. All right. So that was, this is kind of changing my plan. Wow, look at this thing. Holy cow. This is humongous. So there's like peach on the back or on the front, I guess. And then the other side, you can see green, yellow, blue. Look at that. Oh wait, it's still folded, isn't it? Look at this thing. Oh, okay, it's two. It's two bats. 
and they look pretty close to identical let's see yep awesome so she and I had actually had a conversation about it people kept saying they wanted to try multiple fibers and talk to her about different types of fibers and all that kind of thing so she put these together so people would have that opportunity and then also have that opportunity I I don't want a box full of trinkets if I'm ordering fiber I want a box full of fiber and fiber related fun things I really want to get enough fiber to tell if I like it enough fiber to do something with without having to use a whole ton of tools I mean you know I have all the tools but that's not good for everybody so I feel like what Arlene is doing is giving you a chance to try a bunch of different fibers and that is so cool so I'm gonna spin the bats a lot of you, because I make the bats on my drum carter, a lot of times during those videos, people comment and say they haven't spun a bat. Maybe they see the size of the bat and they say, how do you spin that? Because it can be daunting. You look at this big sheet of fiber. It doesn't appear to have an end or a beginning the way that a ball of roving or top does. I'm going to split the two bats that she sent into four or five different pieces and then I'm going to show you four or five different ways to come at your bat and spin it and also you'll get to see that way kind of what the different ways will do with the fiber. I don't want to take someone's bat that I bought because I loved it and recard it. I don't even see the point in that like why would to me why would you even buy it if you didn't like it the way it was but there's still different ways to approach it to make it much simpler to spin rather than just trying to spin off this like giant sheet of fiber that's crazy and also different ways that you approach it can kind of change the way it looks and change how much the fiber is blended change how lofty the yarn is so i'm going to talk about each of those as i go through and i hope that you enjoy it and thank you so much arlene for participating in this video i really appreciate it and i love the boxes that you're offering First, I'm going to take one of these and lay it out and split it in half lengthwise. So this is the bat opened up. So the first thing I'm going to do is make this two bats into four bats so that I can show you four different ways. So the first thing I'm going to do is just split this right here. And I'm also going to set this aside for the second prep. What I want to do is split the bat in strips lengthwise this is like the simplest way you can do it aside from spinning directly off the bat and I just want to kind of turn it into strips of roving so it's really really easy okay Okay, so now I'm just going to go through and draft each one of these a little bit and then I'm going to spin them. So I had a camera malfunction and I lost one clip of how I prepped the second quarter of the bat. So I call this a roll log. Um, I learned it pulling bats off drum carters from Beth from Blue Mountain Handcrafts. And so um, let me just pull this all the way to the end. She would take something directly off her drum carter and usually draft it a little bit this way too and then roll it into one giant spiral first and then take these out and draft the whole thing from an end. So 
So because all of your fibers are in one big spiral and kind of like crossing each other as they get drafted, you get a lot more blending. So this is the prep for the second skein, the second quarter of the yarn. I'm on to the second bat and I'm just going to split it in half so we can do two different techniques on this one. So with this third section, I'm actually going to roll it lengthwise and draft off the end of it. It's also going to blend the fibers, but it's going to loosen them up a lot and make them easier to spin.
going to go through these in the same order that they were spun. So this first one is the one that was the stripped bat. I did not really draft it much either. So that would have probably blended it a little bit more. So I ended up with two ply sport. They're all pretty close to sport. And um, this was 192 yards, 2.4 ounces, 2.82 yards per gram. I was just trying to see how consistent I was. This one is from the roll log, which was the entire bat rolled horizontally and then drafted. So this one you can see if you really, if I get in really close here, there is definitely more blending. I really kind of let this yarn be what it wanted to be. So there is some thick and thin in here and I kind of like that. Oh, down here you can see some really well. See, there's a lot of blending in here. And so this one is also a two ply sport, 176 yards, 2.3 ounces, 2.58 yards per gram so these are pretty close and then these two were spun in like two days so this is the vertical roll that was then drafted so 312 yards 3.5 ounces this is 3.12 yards per gram so i did have a little bit more yardage per gram on these two. I don't know why. Maybe they're a little finer. They don't seem finer. They didn't, weren't any finer when I measured the wraps per inch. So it's kind of maybe because they got loftier. I'm not sure. Um, and then this one is from the roll eggs, the smaller roll eggs, 318 yards, 3.5 ounces also. And this is 3.18 yards per gram. And it's not always what you want, but I do think it's really cool. Um, in this particular bat, the teal with the yellow and the green coming into it is just so darn pretty. I hope this will give all of you some like techniques to go ahead and come at a bat next time you see one and you look at it and you're like, oh, okay, but how do I spin it? Um, there's many other ways to do it, but these are four really good ones and I hope to see what you guys spin. So. Get out there, make something cool. I will see you soon. Bye.